context, you know, we're in this era of rapidly changing cities. We have, uh, you know, a time right now where development is happening rapidly, globally, and we also have a period of disinvestment. And if you think about Rust Belt cities uh, in places like Syracuse, New York, or Baltimore, or the Detroits of America, um, it's also a time where cities need to uh, make more with less resources. Um, and think about how to deal with property uh, that's, that's in flux and changing. At the same time, we have the rise of ubiquitous devices. Smartphones are on the rise. And as a result of that, um, we have this profound ability to actually uh, crowdsource and gauge public input using handheld devices. And we're moving into an era where citizen-generated data isn't just noise or social media information, it's actually a useful asset in the planning process. So if you're an urban planner and you want to use data, and we're not just talking traditional census data or data that the municipality might produce, you actually want to use dynamic information that changes rapidly in real time. Um, there's two ways that you can get this data, and, and one is you know, sort of picking it up from places like social media. The other is through traditional data collection. And many times, this is a rather outdated process. It takes a long time, it's clunky, it's on pen and paper. And in places like Detroit, where we think about vacant and abandoned property, the actual quality of that housing stock can change in the time it actually takes to get the information. So static snapshots of places sometimes don't produce the best kinds of data. If you want to visualize and actually use that information, it typically requires an expert. And we're not just talking about a GIS expert, we're actually talking about somebody who understands how to program. At the same time, we have a move in government today um, to really modernize. There's a, there's a lot of effort around open data and making technology a, a part of the digital government movement. But we also need to remind ourselves that community engagement is important and residents really must be a part of this process. A lot of this is fueled by open data. Um, and open data is great. Municipalities are publishing administrative data sets that are historic or, or even updated on regular time scales. Um, but this data can sometimes be messy and again it provides sort of just a snapshot of, of what's happening in place. So we like to think at local data of, um, of data as actually a participatory exercise in civic engagement, that it doesn't necessarily just need to be a currency that you use to create graphs and charts, but you can actually use data as sort of that bridge between government and citizen. Um, you can connect your citizens uh, to the information that they can collect on the ground to actually increase transparency inside government. Saskia Sassen, a famous sociologist and urbanist, um, made a statement last year about the value of citizen-based information. And she said, leak the knowledge of the neighborhood into codified systems. And so those are the government systems. Those are where our traditional sources of data come from. Like a backward WikiLeak activate a citizenry. And this really struck a chord with me because I think it's really important to actually not just give voice and crowdsource information, but take that data and work it back into those systems. So that's how we came to creating local data. Um, and local data started off as a project at Code for America, but we've since turned it into a startup that brings a service to cities across the globe. Local data is a geospatial data platform that helps planners to collect, understand, and use field data in real time. Um, it's a mobile data collection app, it's a data visualization platform, um, and it allows planners, governments, think tanks, and academics to actually build capacity around using and understanding data. Our vision is that we'll move toward a society that actually uses this local level data to drive informed, empowered decisions on the future of our cities. Here's what it looks like. Um, it's a mobile app where you can go out using any device to collect information uh, out in the field. You can add new data to existing uh, tax assessment information or any other data that you want to start off with. And then you can view that information in real time. Um, you can see who's out in the field collecting what. Uh, you can pull out statistics. You can export into formats that you might be comfortable using already. It's simply taking uh, the traditional survey process and geocoding in real time. And that's all in the browser as well. 
To give you a sense of scale, we have the traditional sense of census block data, which comes from the census. We have municipal data, which is a little bit more granular at the city level. And what local data does is it takes that really important municipal data set at the parcel or point level and adds qualitative information, the voice of local expertise, so that can come from an institution like a nonprofit, a community group, or even a resident, and things like photo uploads. So you can actually start to add rich media to this data set. Um, so far, we've worked on community development projects, asset management, logistics and supply chain management, and understanding where to put future transportation infrastructure. We hope that local data will really support those public-private relationships um, and partnerships so that, again, data can actually be an exercise where you're bridging citizens and nonprofits back to government. Planetizen graciously called us one of the top planning apps in 2014, which we were happy to receive. And I'm just gonna quickly walk through three ways local data has been used. So quickly, the Pittsburgh Property Data Consortium was a group of, um, of people at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, a nonprofit consulting firm, and 12 small community-based organizations. They're actually undertaking uh, a massive survey to understand vacant and abandoned property in the city of Pittsburgh. What they're also doing is developing a comprehensive property data standard so that the information that they've collected across neighborhoods is actually uh, sort of collected and understood in very standardized ways so that the government, the mayor's office, can take that information even though they didn't collect it and use it. In Detroit recently, um, there's been a lot of effort to understand the future and invest, uh, sort of strategic decision making around demolition. Um, we worked with the Michigan Historic Preservation Network and the National Trust for Historic Preservation to document over 90,000 historically significant buildings to be considered in that demolition process. Um, they felt that there was a need to truly understand what property was being targeted before it gets teared down. Lastly, um, recently we worked in Quito, Ecuador to understand how to design for an innovation district. So what digital infrastructure exists on the ground right now? Where are Wi-Fi spots, internet cafes, and who's using it? Um, and that's really to grow an inter innovation district in the downtown core. So as you can see, local data has been used in a variety of ways, um, and it's a simple toolkit to try to understand place. 